Mabuhay, kapatids. My name is Stephanie. And my name is Aimee. And welcome to the Babaylan Bruja Book Club podcast. We have come together in efforts to decolonize our minds, our bodies, and reconnect with spirit by ways of relation via conversation of education, interpretation, and integration. So this is our invitation for you to join us on our journey as we discuss works from honored artists, authors, and thought leaders from the Philippinex diaspora. Quick disclaimer, we want to acknowledge that everyone is consciously where they need to be. And we are not experts, but we are sharing our own unique lived experiences. Hi, sis. Hi. Hey. Hey, and shoulders. Hey, halter top. Get it. Give him a little dance. Just... Y'all need to see. You need to check out the YouTube page. See how cute Amy is today. She's so oh, sexy. Hey. Oh, thank you. Dimes. You know, I'm, just... I'm trying. Tea times out here is trying. I went, to, <laughs> I went to pick up my groceries today and the, the young buck called me ma'am. He said, yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> but I'm, that's respectful, so I can't be yeah. mad at it. Yeah. I like to do that to white people. They love it. So. Uh, oh, yeah. White people love that shit. Especially when I um when I was buying armor, just mm -hmm. armor, ammo, same, same, same thing, same thing. She was like looking at my passport and my names because my names I have four names. Typical. <laughs> she was like, I, "Does that match your thing?" And I was like, "It matches." Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Like, I was like, okay, you know. I knew she was a little frustrated because in California we had to do so much paperwork just to buy a box of bullets. Yeah. 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 But yes, ma'am. Hey, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, sir. Yes, ma'am, ma sir. sir. Out. Yeah. And the, when Polly arts, though, sis, I would blast your very toned, sexy arms. Oh, thanks. <laughs> oh, I'm getting embarrassed now. Okay. <laughs> so when we teach our kids class um, and we like tell them stuff like do this or do that, they're, they'll say yes, ma'am or yes, sir. Just like they just started doing it just by themselves. We didn't ask them to do that. It's so cute when they call me. Yes, ma'am. They're like, yes, ma'am. Like, oh, mm, OK. You oh, little kids. That's right. So but anyway, let's breathe. Let's breathe as we begin. Take a deep breath. Let's take a moment to ground. I encourage you, if you are able to and are in a safe place, just to simply close your eyes, maybe place your hand on your heart, another hand on your solar plex or on your belly, and just take some deep breaths. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale and as you continue to breathe deeply and on your own i invite you to imagine a white light coming from the heavens coming from the cosmos shining down on your head and coming through your body down through your spine and down into the earth Continue to breathe deeply and ground all of your energy into Mother Earth. Whatever you are coming with today, maybe some stress, maybe some sadness, grief, maybe some victory, maybe some joy, maybe some excitedness. Whatever you're coming with today, I invite you to notice it in your body. Take some deep breaths and ground yourself. Come into this present moment. And as we begin our conversation, as always, we'd like to acknowledge, respect and honor the ancestors who are for our highest good and invite them into the conversation today. We also acknowledge the ancestors of this land, knowing we cannot do our own remembrance without remembering them. 
For me, that is the Shawnee, Miami, Hopewell, and Adena people in Ohio. And for Stephanie, that is the Bay, Miwok, Yokut people in the Bay Area, California. We also acknowledge and invite in our guides and source to be with us to support and guide our conversation. We pray that they may support and guide you too. With gratitude, we acknowledge your presence, energy, and light, no matter wherever and whenever you're tuning in. <laughs> Can I open my eyes now? Yeah. <laughs> like the little kid like in the car, like we did? <laughs> Thank you, sis. That was beautiful. Yeah. You're welcome. How's your heart today? Me? How's everyone's heart today? But yeah, check in. I'm with talking yourself. to you. <laughs> yeah, I know. It would be cool like to talk to everybody one day, maybe on a live. Um, yeah. But my heart is, let's see. Um, I'm more grounded now than I was this morning. Um, it's the full moon. I don't know when this is going to drop, but currently it's the full moon in, oh, March. it's in, Aqua in in August, but it's the full moon in Aquarius. Did you know that? On Sunday, the 22nd. Is, yeah, that's right. It's going to come, it's coming, but this is the second full moon in Aquarius in the, in 2021. Oh, yeah. Isn't that interesting? And we're the age of Aquarius. Oh, see what? Aquarius time. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's a great, it's a great sign, you know? Yeah. Probably meant to fuck shit up, but you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I am. My heart is in the present moment. And sometimes the present moment is, you know. Chaotic. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it's all good. It's all good. How is your heart? Sissy, sis, Steffi, Steph. Woo, well. Hmm. Well, <laughs> sing a sing a sing a note for them though. Um, mean, um yeah. you know, sister, it has been a stressful week. In my heart, I am divinely guided and blessed, regardless. Say it and protected. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, <clears throat> I'm just I'm a human. I'm going through these human experiences of emotions and the moon is coming or the full moon is coming my moon is coming and you know i think um the society needs to give women more grace and honoring like us the seasons within us mm -hmm. sometimes it's summer like hot girl summer sometimes it's <laughs> right sometimes it's fall sometimes it's spring and some we're spring chicken like, you know getting all this shit done and then sometimes it's like winter leave me the fuck alone like you know what I mean? Right. So, but anywho, um, I would be lying if I was saying like things are, um, things are not where I'd like them to be. And I recognize that this is a transformational season for me personally. And for the world, I see mm -hmm. you know, what's going on in the news and yeah, and even in like, it's just so much like the micro to macrocosm, just kind of witnessing all the things. And mm -hmm. um, so my heart is like, just reminding me to stay or come back, come back. So <laughs> my heart and I are in a relationship right now. <laughs> it's like, it's like, stop leaving me, like, come back here, you know? Cause I'm like, I'm human. And you know, our, you see like our cup was, even if they're like in Afghanistan, yeah. you know, like they're hurting and like my heart wants to go over there. And then my heart wants to go over here. And then my heart's thinking about like, you know, the state of like the wildfires and all this stuff. That, a lot. So it's, it's, it's calling me to come back. And I think that that's a big collective theme to stay in your body, to yeah. stay in your heart, to stay grounded, stay grounded. Yes. So, and when I remember that, I'm like, things will be okay. You know, there's like a surrender and a peace moment. People arrive to it, whatever feels right for you. Again, take or toss what I say, but 
for me personally, like, like, ah, all this chaos, but how do I like hold it here and stay and we're here, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, you're doing good, sissy. Thank you're you, doing sis. good at being aware. So you're it's so healthy. Good. You're so healthy. Girl, we, I gotta like, it's like you get to choose. Do you want to be sick or healthy? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. um, I, re I recognize there's nuance to that, but at the end of the day, you can choose what you can control. Yes. And that's you, right? Yep. Yep. But yep. That's what I, me. that's what I always tell my kids. I'm like, who controls your reality? They're like me. I'm like, yeah. And so does your emotions come from the situation outside of you or from inside of you? So they're always like inside. Aww, <laughs> I don't know if they like understand it or if they're just like parroting stuff, but hopefully one day they'll, it'll, mm -hmm. they'll be in a real situation and be like, Oh, that's, that's what my mom was trying to tell me. <laughs> I mean, like, my mom was a shit. She really checked me. I know. Kid. I'd be like, yeah, you're right. I'm your mom. I'm your mom. I know a couple things or two. Or yes. Shit. So, but anyway, sis. Aren't I they like you. alpha generation? Sorry to cut you off. No, I was just, just going to say I love you. And I see you going through your stuff. And I uh, witness you. And you are strong and brave and beautiful and healthy as fuck both emotionally and physically and so i just bless you where you is right now thank you sister i received that blessing thank you and that goes to anyone else out there who needs it you need it you take it Those you want are it you too. i got it so we hope y'all's hearts are okay and if you're yes. new, if it's not it's okay it's okay too it's okay too you know yes you ain't gotta be okay all the time. It's okay. Word. <laughs> okay, Babylon Brujas. Let's dive into this chapter. Chapter, chapter 11. 11. We're almost there. We're almost to the end. I know. We This book has 14 chapters. So there's going to be a test at the end. <laughs> midterm? Yeah. Ooh, that's an idea. You could do a midterm. There's going to be a, a midterm and a final exam. And if you guys don't pass, then we don't come back. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you have to get all your A's. Otherwise, you're not, you're not Asian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Asian then. <laughs> That's yeah. for sure. I, I wished I was growing up. I was like, who, whose parents pay them for A's? Like what? Whose parents pay them so, for A's? Why so people? a couple of my friends. <laughs> They were not Filipino. Let's just say that. Okay. <laughs> I, was, I was like, wait a minute. That's like a gold. It's like a, that's a staple in the house. Like you expected, <laughs> like making rice. Like, it's just like, right? you go, you come up with A's or B's. If you get C's and D's, like dishonor, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. My kids were like, uh, are we going to get paid for chores? Cause they're getting old enough to do chores. I was like, no. <laughs> And you're going to pay for rent. That's right. They're like, oh, my friends get paid for chores. I'm like, well, different households do different things. And I was like, are they white? I was kidding. I didn't ask them that. <laughs> but they probably, they are. I mean, honestly. Wow. Well, I mean, you could think about how that's like teaching them financial. Yeah. I said like if they do special extra chores, but you know, everybody uses the toilet. So you got to learn how to wash the toilet without me paying you five bucks a week to wash it you know what i'm saying my that's whole how i is, look at it if if my kids i'm not saying your kids if my kids start asking that i'll be like okay you ready to pay rent because <laughs> <All right. laughs> i'm paying you labor right <laughs> i was like you, you you we all live here this is your home too so you gotta take care of it no one pays me to take care of it so anyway right Anyway, that's a tangent. Wow, we're taking lots of tangents. Let's dive in. Okay, chapter okay. 11. Yes. <laughs> so this was written by Eileen Tabios, Ate Eileen. She's a 16 plus time published poet and activist. 
She walks us through the meta meaning of what it means to bring a poem into the world and how that is to bring the world into a poem. That's one of her poems actually on page 262. It's called Conjuration, Conjuration number five. Um, she's a central Ilocos, Sur area born um, native. And she shares she shared some um, information about getting, um, encountering Babylon, but they call Man, Man Nawak in Ilocano um, and how uh, Mano, Man Nawak healed her great grandmother. So it's a cool little story um, in the in the chapter. I'm, I don't know if we should share it, but it, it's it's really cool. Yeah, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna touch on it later. That was part of my quote. So yay. Okay. So um, her passion for us to expand our consciousness through poems. Um, she kind of expresses having the poems call us out. And it's led her to create several successful blog and publishing startups. She's also signing other Capua um, Philippinex publishing companies, but hers was Meritage Press. Um, it's known for publishing Pinoy Poetics, um, other grassroots Philippinex publishers. I was mentioning Taboli Press or RQ Pelago Expressions, if y'all probably know or heard of them. And her call to action in this chapter, what, from what I gathered, is just to consider new creative ways and how we approach poetry, literature, the arts, and that we keep practicing supporting each other, you know, mm -hmm. which is, let's just support each other. Let's stop hating on each other. <laughs> I love that. But yeah, I don't think I have anything to add, sister. Uh, no, that was, that was good. There's a, um, it's a shorter chapter and, um, yeah, let's just dive in, shall uh -huh. we? Let's do it. So vocabulary words, as you all know, we do two vocabulary, two vocabulary words and two quotes, and we kind of just like talk about it. Um, so, uh, mine my vocab words are from page 265 and so the last section i don't know maybe you can help me uh um shed some light on this but the last section she entitles moi constantly welcomes toi and i guess that's french because i was like moi welcomes <laughs> I read it that way too. Toy. And so I'm like Google and it's moi. Moi constantly ah. welcomes toi. So me, ah. I constantly welcomes you. So um which I thought it was interesting that she introduces French like randomly, like super randomly. Like that's the, mm. the head of the section of the last chapter on page 265. It's uh it, i feel like it was really like out of the blue so i had to uh look it up i wonder if her partner is french i think i've seen a picture of her partner mm, okay Atailene, if you're listening to us <laughs> we follow you follow us back <laughs> follow per palo follow per palo po <laughs> <Ate>. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh okay are you, are you allowed to call your ate po i don't know i, I think mean, so i'm not sure like respect somebody tell us okay comment below how about that okay so your moi moi constantly welcomes toi so me i constantly welcomes you me constantly welcomes you um so i guess it's part of her 15th poetry collection called the light sang as it entered your eyes um and that's the byline as its author so moi constantly welcomes toi and i don't know it's um it kind of when i've recognized what it meant finally kind of remember kind of reminded me of kapwa right kapwa did seeing mm. yourself in the other right mm -hmm. so i just thought it was beautiful i don't know if this is a direct french like expression but if it is i i find that beautiful that 
there would be like a capwa expression but in but in french you know and so it makes me wonder what other uh cultures and languages have a word like capwa that has the same meaning like seeing seeing myself in you you seeing myself in me like the oneness of everything right so i don't know yeah. if like other cultures have a word or a phrase that like embodies or expresses that oh yeah um, mm -hmm. but um i thought it was interesting too and maybe this is why she brings up something french but because i think you're going to touch on this later but one of her uh i think it's the meritage press it started also not only featuring filipino artists but like there was mm -hmm. an australian i think a, a finnish artist um spanish artist or something like poet so uh i just thought it was interesting like it started out as specifically filipino pinoy and then it became more global yes so, yeah yes i think i'll touch it later about the bylonic DIYers, mm -hmm. um, but how like yeah, it, I thought that was cool. She, she essentially founded a you know the press made to publish her her works, and then other poets um, reached out, and then she, they I guess published she published their stuff too. So right, not just Philippinex artists. There's just yeah. poetry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Other poets. Yeah, and kind of I guess like alluding to you're saying me welcomes you, or um, I mean, because we're all mirrors, we're all fractals of the divine, mm -hmm. all children of God. Whatever language resonates for people, mm -hmm. um, so um, you know, it's kind of why it gets not to be like gloom and doom, but that's why they say you know um, love your brothers and sisters because essentially we all came from yeah from god you yeah. know yeah so, yeah either you welcome yourself or you don't welcome yourself <laughs> so yeah i um just real quick so the last new moon in august i held um a sacred kali circle and i had advertised it just on instagram i put it out there and i was like hey just whoever wants to come come so um we had a good group of people in the zoom and then uh right before we did our embodiment meditation practice somebody popped in the chat and i'm not assuming anybody's like i didn't want to assume her cultural background but she messaged me and she was like and she was a woman of color and she was like hey can i stay because i didn't realize uh that this was maybe specifically for filipinex um people mm -hmm. and she was like the only one who wasn't filipinx i guess and um she's like I, if this is too private she was very respectful she was like if this is too private like i thought it was just for you know bipoc people and it like i was just inviting anybody if you feel if you felt and that's what i told her i was like i was inviting anybody if you felt called you felt called so i was like you know we have this thing called kapwa and it's to see ourselves in the other so you know, if you find yourself here, you know, like, cause I, cause she was like, I'll go. I'm very respectful. I'll leave if you need me to leave. If this is like Super a private thing. Culturally, like. Yeah. Like private. she didn't want to like encroach. And I was like, no, I was like, well, maybe then that was for me. I was like, well, maybe in the future I should say like, I mean, it was for anybody who felt called. Right. But I, yeah. uh, maybe in the future. I, open. Right. So I said, but please stay because of Capua. Right. And there's always something that you can you can gather here and, you, you know, you're welcome here. If you're already here, obviously, spirit said to come. <laughs> so yeah. but anyway, um, yeah, Papua. And it means not only just see yourself in Filipinx people, but like in everybody, see yourself in the other. Exactly. So exactly. Yeah, I, um, I think I mentioned a few episodes past about identity politics mm. and again just traces back to like whatever you refer to we all come from source god children of god you know so 
we just reincarnated into different bodies Mm -hmm. of color, gender, quote unquote, um, you know, upbringing, things like Mm -hmm. that. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, what's coming through for me, sis, is like last night when I stumbled upon the Tongare song, which is sang by the Yawanawa um, tribes in Brazil. And this is where my necklaces come from for those who are watching the YouTube. It's, it's made by the women cool. in the tribes. Yeah, they're handmade. So cool. My goddess in ceremony. And um, I was looking up, I was trying to look up what does Tongare mean, but I really couldn't find it. And mm. I was looking up like, different versions of the song and I noticed because it's a very beautiful song to play on the guitar Mm. and there are a lot of natives who do it there's also a lot of you know white people doing it too it was interesting to see people in Finland doing it um, all around the world right and in my mind you know the colonizer trauma wound went off like why are these why are these pale looking people singing these songs that originated in the Amazonian or the, you know, in South America. But then I think about what we're talking about right now. It's like me welcomes you. It's dropping those veils of identity because essentially I am me and you are you and I'm welcoming, I'm me. I'm me. I'm me. <laughs> <But I'm bum>. um, <laughs> welcomes you. And so I was like, you know what? Like as long as they're bringing that vibration of peace and calmness do I think that they should be aware about bringing um their own cultural things yes and if they're gonna you they're gonna exploit or use or step into um sacred practices by other cultures they should be giving back meaning monetary volunteer work awareness activist whatever you know give back to that Mm -hmm. community so y'all are having ceremony um hope that percentage goes back to those actual tribes, you know, that are the original gatekeepers of the medicine. So um, yeah, I, that, that was like coming through for me about you, you know, with that woman, that Kapwa, that is, wasn't Philippine X, but essentially it's, they are still a Kapwa. Yeah. And so yeah. I think about me as a Philippine X woman sitting in a South American ceremony, you know, and how, I have brothers and sisters in those circles and the person who sang the song, they're of Chinese descent. So Mm -hmm. it's just kind of like Mm -hmm. tying to like this point about the poets that at the Eileen published, acknowledging like poetry, culture. We're just at an age where things have just recognized, like we're all under, we're all interconnected and and interdependent at some capacity. So yeah. Why not just welcome as we get to know yourself, like welcome others. Yeah. You know. So yeah. I hope that kind of makes sense. Like, no, that totally makes sense. And I think that plays off of what we actually talked about in the last episode, right? About I forget. Yeah. There's I don't know remember the exact um thread that was the same, but it feels the same. But um, but just to piggyback on what you said, like uh, you know the woman who messaged me um she was very respectful and i think that is what we need to carry into uh if we enter into other cultures right like Ah, reverence reverence and respect and be like okay i understand what is happening here and just asking is it okay for me to stay and i think that's where the sacred rage comes up because no permission yes no a lot of the indigenous cultures white people just showed up and were like thank you and we're like wait and wait a minute nobody said you could have that right but if they came and i was like let me learn for you like you know uh let me learn can i may i you know you know with like permission and reverence and respect instead of greed and Capitalism. How can I capitalize off this? How can I bring this back and not be in honor of the original, I, I would say gatekeepers of the medicine or the, mm-hmm. you know, the medicine you're bringing, whether that be breath work, whether that be Kali Masher art, whether that be, mm-hmm. you know, um, Reiki, learning a song from a cultural land, you know, mm-hmm. those things are supposed to be gifted. You don't just 
do it and take it, you know? Right. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So I think that that's like, and to be fair, colonizers are not just white people. They have been, um, Mm -hmm. white supremacy is a, is an energy state. I was listening to this podcast yesterday, um, about white supremacy, not being like technically a race anymore. It's just an energy state that we keep perpetuating and we ourselves unconsciously, we can also be engaging in it. So she was talking about, for example, right now, Hawaii, because everybody and they mama's yeah, in Hawaii. Yes. And these Hawaiians <laughs> are like, yo, our water can't run because the tourists are taking all the water. The army's like taking up land, you yeah. know, et cetera, et cetera. Again, it's the same shit about colonizers taking over land mm-hmm. and essentially, um, what do they call that when they um, they ban people from the land? Um, Uh, banish people yeah kind of start with the e i believe but it's oh evacuate or yeah i think i know what you're saying yeah (laughs) somebody comment down below (laughs) yeah but you know just um where was i going with this this um you're talking about hawaii and um we were talking about uh colonizers and how white supremacy is like a um mindset it's a mindset that we are do do or do not engage consciously right so part of the healing is recognizing the spaces where you are engaging and and perpetuating that white supremacy energy so when you she was saying like when you get off the plane Instead of buying a cup from Starbucks, can you go to a local cafe instead? Yeah. Support the local business if you must visit the land. And also, if yeah. you're going to be there, if you move there, if you live there, are you giving yeah. back to the people of the land? They're talking yeah. about in Costa Rica, like because a lot of white people are buying land there and they're holding ceremonies and healing mm. retreats and yeah. shit. But they're not necessarily giving back to the people that live on like mm. I think it's like Atitlan mm-hmm. or something. So that's the conversation that really needs to be had about folks stepping into spaces, whether it be on a webinar, you know, having a collie circle or taking land, like y'all just don't ask permission. Like you just kind of just take like, you know, so, um, but karma, karma comes back, you know, karma comes back. Yeah. Whoo. I know it was a lot. No, that, I mean, that's good. I mean, I like what you said, what you shared about what you, that concept about how white supremacy is a mindset. And I, you know, just you talking about that, I just realized, you know, even recognizing myself, how perhaps mm-hmm. that plays out in my own life when I was um, before my decolonization process, right? Like just looking at other cultures and be like, Oh, that's cool. Let me go ahead and wear that. Cause that'll look cool on me or whatever. You know what I mean? Like just yeah. not understanding the historical significance or just looking at shit and be like, Oh, that's cool. Let me go ahead and like take that design, whatever, or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> My bad. Know, that's just my confession. Woo. It will. That's, and that's part of, um, you know, that's growth for you to reckon to for people to recognize that, like some people really don't mean harm. It's just the systems that are in place that have conditioned us to yeah. perpetuate this. And so that's part yeah. of decolonizing, recognize like, wait a fucking minute and start yeah. challenging it and be like, what would be, what looking at you as my brother and my sister, what's like, I don't even want to say the right thing to do, but what feels more aligned with honoring the people who actually live here? It's like going to your home. Like I wouldn't just show up at your doorstep and then take your furniture or like climb all over your walls. And like, you know, like how people are doing Hawaii right now, they're climbing all, they're hiking. I was like, there's so many people. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's, it's just, I think awareness is the medicine. That's really what it is. Yes, awareness. Like I remember, okay, we need, we get to close, be complete with this vocabulary (laughs) word, but this, like, I'm just sharing one more, one last thing. (laughs) Do it. This is like, so me and sis, we Marco Polo all the time. And then we're always like, okay, this is the third time I've said goodbye. (laughs) 
<laughs> on our march. So this it's is- like the Filipino party is like, okay, we're leaving now. Yeah. It takes like 30 minutes to get out the door. Okay. So I was, I just, this memory popped in my, or like this example yeah, sure. popped in my brain that I remember okay. like when I was in the ev- evangelical church. Right. And so there would all be these cute ass white girls who came back from like missionary trips and they'd be like, yeah, I got this like necklace from when I was in Nicaragua and don't get me started on like the whole mission trips thing, but they don't understand that I'm like intrinsically, like even back then I was like, "Mm, this feels weird. But Mm -hmm. then like, they just wore it as like, Ooh, it's cute. Like this is your pasalobon for- Yeah, it's cute. And like, I get to tell people, Oh, I went to, I went on a missions trip, right? Like, you know, you're wearing something, you're like, I sat in ceremony and I, you know, I recognize that these are the people that like made this necklace, da, 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 da. But there's this sense of white supremacy where it's like, oh, I did this to help these people. And I went here and don't I look cute in my jewelry or something. Not everybody was like that. And maybe it wasn't conscious, but it was definitely unconscious. And so that's, right. the, but I did that too. That's the same shit I did. So yeah, I mean, me having this necklace could say that too. Um, but I'm, you're aware of it. I'm aware like, that the, the person who brought it back stayed in the village and served the people. I believe right. for a couple of times. So, you know, this is where the the discernment of me welcoming you, like yeah. It's a heart thing. It's a heart discernment, right? But some people are still going to be like, no, fuck that. I'm still mad, you know? And it's like, honor it, you know? Yeah. yeah. But It's complex. It's nuanced. So, but in the end, of, at the end of the day, capua. So. Capua. It's just, yeah. So it kind of flows into hainaku, which is my vocab word, okay? Yes. Because <laughs> it sounds like hainaku. hainaku. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh literally throw up your hands i mean you don't gotta be you no know, christian evangelical you could be atheist this is a universal gesture okay yeah i surrender like yeah. whatever hi <laughs> 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 knuckle <laughs> but hi knuckle is on page 264 um And she states here, um, when you make activism inherent in a poetics, you might even do something that most poets poets never do, inaugurate a new poetry form. In my case, the creation of Hainaku, a poetic form that's written more by non-Filipino poets than Filipino poets, interesting. The Hainaku is a tercet from the first line being one word and the second line being two words and the third line being three words. So she recognizes a deep, it's a deep, der, I can say words, deriv, deriv, derivation, derivation. I say derive. We just going to say derive. Yes, derive from, yes. But you said it right. Of the ubiquitous Filipino expression, hi, knuckle, alerts poets, therefore peoples from, she says different places. But I think for me, it's like a, for me, high knuckle is like high knuckle. It's very like whatever. Like just the energy behind it is like, I'm frustrated, but whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um that was an interesting vocab word that I wanted to share because um I think there's like a Japanese poet or poem. Yeah, it's called a haiku. A haiku. Yeah. Haiku. Yeah. And yeah. It's, yeah. It's also like the first line is like so many syllables. The second yeah. line is so many syllables. And the third line is so many syllables. So the way she writes it is, so ainaku is, is two words, H-A-Y and then N-A-K-U. But the, haina, the, the poetic form that she talks about is she spells it H-A-Y and then in parentheses N-A. KU. So you kind of see the high and the ku, haiku, but then in the middle she puts na, so it's like hai na ku, mm-hmm. which is kind of clever. Cool. Yeah. It's, a, it's definitely like a pun. And I love that she's definitely a writer because she wrote like somewhere on like page 261, in light, pun intended. I know. <laughs> I 
right? That too is so sad. Oh. But um, an example of a high naku I'll share with Charles. It's at the end. She wrote, um, the poem is called After Eileen. It's, it's like this. In my book, I'm also others. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Less in is my, more sometimes, you know? Yeah, Less and that's Kapwa. She's talking about Kapwa. In my book, I'm also others. Mm -hmm. Moi welcomes toi. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so maybe um, the listeners at home, ooh, they should write us a hainaku. Yeah. <laughs> or tell us when no. you're- Well, yeah. no, you did the assignment because- yeah. We'll respond with, yeah. our, with our own high knuckles. Yeah. The challenge you challenge us. Yeah. Or tell us when your mom was like, I know <laughs> to you, dude. Like, so why I like, I'm such a, a Filipina mom. Like, I don't even speak fluent Tagalog, but when my daughter does specifically my daughter, cause she's an Aquarius. So she's here to fuck Ooh. shit up too. Yeah. So, um, when she's just doing something and like she just like pushes the boundaries and she knows when i'm done when i'm like hi naku <laughs> and so she'll just like go and do the thing <laughs> i tell her to do she's like oh no but like i i it's like it just comes up i don't even think about it i don't e i don't even care who's around we're like like in the store in target or whatever <laughs> And I'll just say it like it doesn't matter if anybody like knows what it means or not, but she knows what it means. And it literally like it's ancestral. Yeah. <laughs> it just like, bubbles up like, inside of you, me. You better behave for a some I follow you in the yeah. door. <laughs> it's just <laughs> like gentle parenting, but also I know cool. It's both. It's both. Yeah. Cause sometimes gentleness just don't move shit. You know what I mean? You gotta bring right? the other elements. So Right. Okay. So anyway, hi Naku. If you feel called, uh, it's the first line is one word. The second line is two words. The third line is three words. Three words. Yeah. You want to play a little bit, sis? Can you sure. Draw a a hi a Naku right now. Okay. I was, I was reading yesterday. I was like, hmm. About what? Is it? Um. <laughs> I went to food. I don't know why. <laughs> my moon i was hungry i was i was uh, fasting while i was reading i was like chicken chicken adobo, chicken adobo rice <laughs> i was like ooh, that'd be delicious fried rice right now oh my god that's hilarious that's my poem <laughs> chicken, chicken adobo. snaps chicken adobo oh, rice. snaps 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 if i had a restaurant it's gonna be a dish Chicken adobo fried rice. Oh, ooh, I... ooh, yes. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, you don't have to. I know I put you on the hot seat, but uh, <laughs> do 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 do. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> I I get, uh, I'll write you one later. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Sorry, I'm not good on the, I'm not good on the fly. That's too much pressure. Can I give you a topic? Yeah, uh, give me a topic. There we go. Instruments. Instruments. Okay. Um. Sing to me a love song. Mm, that's good. <laughs> Did you feel that? That was, that was spirit led. <laughs> MC Imes in the house. Hello. Hi Naku. Hi Naku. That's my hi Naku for you. Sing for all of you. Chicken adobo. But how about Babailan? Babailan Brujas. Babailan Brujas podcast. <laughs> I was trying to fit like <laughs> a podcast. I was like, that's Our podcast words. is a high naku, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. That was fun. All right. All right. Quotes. We'll move on to quotes. Yes. Okay. You feel complete with this word? I or? do. 
That was fun. I feel complete <laughs> if you feel complete. <laughs> I do. <laughs> okay. Right. So um, my quote was from, uh, so in the beginning, like we said, Ati Eileen says that um, her grandmother was healed by the Manawak, which is the Ilocano, um, the Babylon. Uh, hmm. The Babylon is known as Manawa in uh, Ilocos area where she was born. So, um, it, it, it language. It's oh, language. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was interesting because, you know, we only know like Tagalog. It, yeah. Yeah. And so like Cebuano, Bisaya, but yeah. Itneg. I was like, oh, Itneg. Okay. So Sorry. it can be translated as a healer and caller of spirits. So she like witnessed the uh, ceremony or the way that the Manawak healed her grandmother and she derived three points that reverberated poetically with from her. And so um, the one that I'm taking my quote from was the first thing that she um, that poetically stood out to her. Uh, so the healing process involved the Manawa calling to the spirits ranging from statements, please come, please come to almost uulating sounds, um, which is like a a, a, a uulate, uulating or uulating, uulating, like it's like deep womb, like it's like a, it's not, it's like a, ooh, like a, it's deep and it's like almost when a woman is in labor like that kind of sort of sound. I mean you saw yeah you're pushing a girl right so, so the cosmos boop. right you're becoming a whole ass portal your portal is opening so you're gonna you you late a little bit anyway <laughs> so um she, she says in other words the manawa does not heal others on her own she must involve others and then again that like speaks to what kapwa like we were talking about so the manawak does not heal others on her own she must involve others and this reminded me of like one of the chapters that we first read it was saying how in the healer in the dance between the healer and the person needing to be healed, both are actually getting heal healing. And like, we kind of like need, the healer needs somebody to heal and the he the person, you know what I mean? The person needing healing needs a healer, but the healer wouldn't be a healer without someone needing to be healed. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see it what I'm saying? You. Me welcomes you. Uh, yeah, it's, it's like a... I'll log one. All, co all connectedness. Yeah. Yes. So I just thought that was beautiful. The Manawak does not heal others on her own. What's that? Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, that's okay. What'd you say? Saying like a healer. A healer doesn't heal you. A healer holds space for you to heal yourself. Yes. Um, but a healer wouldn't exist if you needed that space. So. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's just a whole may I share what was coming through? Yes, please. Um, for me, I was like, we're bringing back the Bavailan as we each kind of recognize our ancestral roots, mm -hmm. our ancestral emotions, our mm -hmm. ancestral trauma, mm -hmm. our decolonizing work. Um, if you choose to walk this path, you're, you're, you're bringing that life force back into the Bavailan. Right wherever and whenever you're tuning in right um and I think that's that's so beautiful I don't know, it's like because you're saying the Manawak does not heal others on her own but the violin cannot exist on her own yeah they yeah cannot exist on their own excuse me yeah the violin is gender fluid and um I, yeah I just think like community is everything for in, for indigenous for people, you know, and so yeah, and that we all recognize 
in some way, shape, or form, we are descendants of Babylon, or we know someone in Babylon, or we have like at least a gene code in us somewhere in ourselves, mm-hmm. like of a Babylon, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah. And we're not able to do it on our own. And I think maybe I don't know. Uh, something's coming to me about like, so like the way the indigenous, like for instance, the Babylon heals versus like doctors or Western medicine, right? It's so transactional in the Western world. Like yeah. you pay me and, but I see you for like 15 minutes, but I see like 30 patients a day, but like in the village with the Manawak or with the Babylon, um, it's very communal. It's very, uh, you know, you know, these people, right? So like, even with, I remember, cause so Bob Island can, were sometimes midwives, right? So I remember like, uh, with both my kids, one, first one, I had a doula, the second one, I had midwife because I was like, I don't want a doctor just to come or nurses to come in every hour and then a doctor to come in, some white man doctor to come in and like take my baby, like, you know, be like, okay, you know, your baby's born. Like I wanted a woman to sit with me mm-hmm. and look me in the eyes mm-hmm. and like, you know, like some village shit. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I knew, I instinctually knew like that's what I needed to be able to do what I was gonna do, you know? And so um, it just, yeah, that's a whole other conversation. But sometimes I wonder if we looked at like the birthing process here in the Western world through the Babylon eyes, through village eyes, through something like it's communal, it's spiritual, it's a portal opening instead of something so clinical, if women would, wouldn't would be as afraid of it as they are. Because I hear a lot of young women, they're like, oh, I'm not having kids. And I had the same idea too, because it's going to hurt. And I'm like, yeah, it 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 is, but also like you can do it, but they don't see the support because there is no support. No one talks about support and people are like, oh, I don't want people in the birthing room with me. I just want me and my husband or whatever, which is fine. Like everybody is allowed to experience the experiences they want it to be, but like, mm. like, what, um, yeah. It's just, it just hits different when you have someone there to help you. So like they were kind of Bobailan, even though they weren't, you know? Yeah. Um, You know, what's crazy. My work bestie is a doula and she's a triple water sign. Oh, yeah. It's always interesting when I meet triple, triple signs. I'm like, how is your sun, moon and rising the same elements crazy and then the way that they govern themselves archetypes again people can take your toss this this resonates but it's just so interesting and her presence is very flowy and Mm. so it's just fascinating that she is a doula um it's perfect water 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 birth i know see like those things like you can't you can't write that you funny you know like you 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 we're reincarnated versions of the divine and it's like no wonder like this person Mm -hmm. would come be this doula and she had like two births before we went to LA together that's when I went to the concert with yeah yeah um yeah yeah so I'm I'm for it I'm for it um I can only imagine especially right now with COVID because Mm. there's so much restrictions and yeah it does matter the energy in the room when your baby is born, you know? Hell yeah. That's implanted into us. Yeah. So I digress though. I know this is like a thing, but um, yeah. But yeah. Um, so Manawak, but the Manawak, Manawak does not heal others on her own. Yes. She and I just want to say the future is indigenous. Okay. So once we get back to recognizing we all existed in villages and we didn't have to make hella money, we just bartered services and we supported each other and we worked. I don't know what's going to happen, how that can be possible in this day world, but 
you know, people remembering the community and like how we kind of all work together. I think that's what it is. I think it's remembering the heart of it, right? So like still having, I mean, internet and the cars that we drive and even like, you know, I need a surgeon sometimes if something crazy happens, right? Girl, like, yeah, Western give, medicine has its place. Yeah, Absolutely. Give, give me a brain surgeon when I need one. But like, just to know, like, I would love to see the combination of it, right? Like the heart of the indigenous, right. the heart of community, the heart of taking care of the planet and living closer to the land, living more holistically alongside and married intermingled with both and like the technologies of today, using yep. indigenous technologies and also modern technologies and finding a way that they're not they're not opposing because they're not we're just using them as opposing right now the human race but because we're we have that duality where new is good old is bad right but yeah. instead of going uh well actually what if it's all good and we just try to figure out the best of both of the things so yeah so yeah it's a great great way to question the age of Aquarius. So that push is the edge. Quote. Yes, push the push the edge. That's what that's what you know. Very that's rebellious what, outside yeah. the box. Like that's what my daughter does. She's always pushing. Can't wait to hang out with her. Oh yeah, she's we're gonna have fun. She's <laughs> she's she's a lot of fun. She's she's uh she has a lot of personality, and it's so funny because like she'll push she'll push and push and push until i'm like i know right and then she'll be like okay mom <laughs> like oh <laughs> never mind but like my son he's a pisces he's a water Aww. he's a pisces sun and a scorpio moon so he's super watery water, water. yeah mm -hmm. and so like if i just say like if i just say like i don't even have to like raise my voice but he can just tell when i'm like angry or frustrated or disappointed and he'll just like feel it and like I don't have to like whereas my daughter's like uh, 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 like push 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 he's like oh I'm sorry <laughs> I'm sorry mom like, oh. so <laughs> it's like they're opposite man like oh I can't yell at you I can't I knuckle you <laughs> I know so but anyway oh. that's a tangent wow because you're cancer so water 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 okay so. okay back to yes back we're ba and we're back i am complete with my quotes if you would like to go with yours all righty so we'll go on to page 262 um it's kind of this term she used babylonic diyers so it's again just kind of highlighting how the babylon when shit didn't work out they made shit happen okay and yes so um, she said in creating Meritage Press, initially for releasing Pinoy Poetics, I relied on a do-it-yourself approach. It is a DIY approach that has become more common in the poetry world, grappling with limited venues for so non-commercial a product as poetry. I would I would argue it's different now. I don't recognize this was written um, ten years ago. Yeah, so poetry has become. I mean, everyone's writing, which is great. It's great. It's great. Um, but I think I would be interested to see the shift in publisher publishing companies mm. with all books now. But when she wrote this, it was just interesting how she kind of shared that she basically made her own print on demand technology. And I was like, go ahead. Out there. <laughs> like, she was like, listen, Y'all don't want to, y'all don't want to publish. I would make my own shit. So yeah, um, make it happen. Yeah, she said. Rather than wait for others to publish poetry, more contemporary poets are setting up publishing houses, a development facilitated by such technological advancements such as print on demand. So, and then she started to do it for others approach, which is very babylonic for providing leadership rather than looking for others to provide opportunity. So again, just tying to like how the Babylon was really for community, you know, they're, yeah. they're leaders, they were spearheaders, they were, you know, they did the things they did was for the community. Yeah, you know, which is what this podcast is for, it's for the community. So um, 
and us discussing it, you know, this is an invitation, as we stated, for y'all to just um, consider, you know, how do you relate to the bylaw and, and how do you kind of show up in your communities with your medicine? Because you're a medicine person as well. You mm-hmm. know? We all have medicine. Yeah. So um, DIY and it, it kind of like, it brought me back to my Merced roots because I went to a grassroots UC. So anybody aware of the, the educational, higher educational institutions in California, Merced was the newest university. And when I entered, I was like the second inaugural class and wow. there was nothing there. <laughs> okay. And um, now it's like, I think there's a lot of articles featuring as like the top 10 green mm. Um, campuses because there's a lot of solar panels there's a lot of like innovative new technological advancements in that school and when I was there in 2006 2010 we had like one dining commons three (laughs) buildings three majors like we had no but we had like one bar so we really had to make shit happen from academics to student life to to party life you know (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm grateful because it led me to meet like, whatever, you, if you'd like her or not, but I met Michelle Obama there. And that was like, something as like, I felt like a karmic, like, reward or like, accomplishment for going somewhere where you really had to make shit happen. Because the first inaugural mm-hmm. class, I don't know if I've shared this with y'all, but mm-hmm. again, it's just, um, they wanted to graduate with a great speaker. And so the spearheaders of the campaign that I was part of, they're like, we're getting Michelle Obama. And we're like, no way. And they're like, yeah, come to a meeting. And then, you know, we went through like the phases of like courting her and getting the community to like woo her. Like the community wrote like Valentine's day cards. Cause you know, like Barack was so sweet to Michelle like, yeah. publicly yeah. and they would always celebrate yeah. them. So like we had our, our community write her notes and then people in the group were like videographers. So they produced a a YouTube video and like people were voicing like why she should come. And it was just so grassrooted because no one had actually thought of asking the first lady to come first black lady in America, you know, to come, which is so monumental. And um, so she said, yes. (laughs) So that was like, that's amazing. One of my favorite DIYs of my life. Yeah. I won't forever like, you know, that must have felt so cool, like this grassroots movement. And then you, you know, you made the thing happen. That's yeah, like, such an, like sense of like accomplishment, you know, like, oh, it worked. So yeah, you take a, you take a risk, you know, take a chance. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, <laughs> I change. love that. I love how she was talking about uh, Baba Lan Ik. I would say Baba Lan Ish these days <laughs> but um but yeah just she's like she's making merch i'm waiting waiting to make merch sis make some merch bye lan ish yeah i'm yeah yeah because i think like if we're gonna talk about nuance really quick ish, yeah, it's like it. we're not claiming it because there's a subtle you know people who are more yeah. like conservative or like you need to earn that title or like you need to have somebody train you or whatever right right, right. So, bye lan ish Ish. I like that. I like that. No, we'll, we'll put that back in our back pockets. Stay tuned. For the future. But so what I thought was interesting was she was talking about um, creating opportunities for others. So she's like, she said, creating opportunities for others. We all pitch and promote our books. It's certainly the least we can do for publishers who support us in our history. Then she says, but because she's talking about she's an activist, she says, but um, just pitching and promoting books, that's not activism. That's advertising. I was like, oh, shit. Call them out then. I was like, oh, snap. No, you didn't. And so, like, I don't know. Uh, So, you know, in the Instagram world, it's always like, oh, it if you like something like repost it on your stories or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And that's great. You know, that does get people. uh, Who's this? 
Yeah, it does. But then, you know, so for me, like having my own business, it made me think like, oh, wow, like creating opportunities for others, you know, and that's, I don't know, just for me, I was like, okay, well, how can I, I don't know the answer, but like just being aware of how to be able to create opportunities for others in the community. Like, I feel like, you know, here we are creating the opportunity for conversation. Right. For, um, you know, awakening, growth, remembrance, remembrance, decolonization, you know, and just to have that space where you can um, think on that. But yeah, I just thought it was interesting just the juxtaposition of, okay, just that's promoting something that's just advertising. Yeah. And then activism is something totally different, you know? So yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, it's just the thought. I don't have any action points, but it, for me, it's something settled and like, hmm, okay. I don't, I don't know, but okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it traces back to the, um, I'm me through you or, you know, mm-hmm. the blah, blah thing mm-hmm. and how Baba Island exists because of community and yeah. yeah. Um, part of decolonizing work is also tracing back to your roots to remember who you truly are. And um, kind of like adding on to this, this quote, she does on 262 towards the end, she says, let me suggest that no matter how much success Filipino writers achieve, and you don't have to be just a writer, for, for example, but now and in the future, there will always be a need for that grass we grow ourselves. This is why I consider cultural literacy activism to be Babylonic, because the Babylon practice, as I understand, involves or respects community. Mm. So I think like um, us having this space to invite, you know, kapwas to listen in and have, you know, like home, motherland, like return back to your roots and use that to remind you of who you are. Um, yeah. Is, is like, you know, like perpetuating this, like what you were saying, what you were saying, sis. Yeah. Um, yeah, creating opportunities. Exactly. So we're just out here trying to be Babylon ba- ba- ish. ish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good punchline, sissy. Ooh. Okay. Uh-huh. I feel complete there. I don't know. Oh, one thing I wanted to comment about poems as this is a thought. It's a question for you. Because she wrote it like a couple of times. I was like, ooh. And you know, we have one of our sister friends as a medium. Do you think poems... It's, so she goes, I conceive of a poem's creation as one of the poet's role is not to write the poem so much as the tool of which the poem is written. So it's like thinking of like, um, I was like, poems are entities, like they come, you think about it. I'll stop there though. Like, what do you think, sis? Uh, it's probably like a both and. There have been times where I feel like something has come to me. And I know this has happened to you too. You feel like it's just like, you get it word for word for word for word for word or note for note for note or whatever. It's just mm-hmm. like, boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, well, what? that's kind of how it was when I started Mayati Moon, like Apothecary. Like I had no, like I, that wasn't even in my brain. And then it just felt like boom, 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 boom. So I feel like it's probably both. There's probably like a download process, right? But then it's also, I think, I, and, and I also think like if you are creative, everyone's creative. Like, so I feel like if you want to, you can sit and actually conjure up the spirit of something and write it and let's like create it from out of the nothing so i think it's like a both and so like i think there's sometimes when it drop it drops in but then i think there's some time where there's like an alchemy happening where you're just like sitting with your pen and like you make it or and or and or both and and then like some downloads come in and then they're just it's just like alchemy it's magic and then boom i wish i was yeah. I wish I could draw, like illustrate what you were just saying. Cause I'm picturing like you at a desk, whoever's at a desk, right? And then something's coming through and you're like, ah, and then you're like, 
and the room gets all magical. Like mm-hmm. uh, Fantasia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but anyway, that's a good question. So, I mean, a lot of art is channeled from somewhere, you know. Yeah. Art is essentially channeling it from somewhere so. it's channeling from somewhere and i think people really we because we are creator we can literally create that shit from what's inside of us from our yeah. own dna from our own like spiritual experiences and spiritual histories from this life from the past life we literally can create that shit from nothing right because i mean if you believe the the if you go by the the bible story like the bible creation story god spoke and it was right so that's like using words to make the world and if we are god then we can also just take things out of ourselves and like create so anyway yeah. that's my using two cents. words to make the world i'm gonna leave with that using words to make the world so watch your words mm-hmm. or my favorite mc says Choose your words wisely because the all knowing is listening. Oh, yes. Sarah. Sarah. Forever. The banger. Anyways, how do you feel, sis? I feel good. I hope everyone (laughs) else feels good out there. Thanks for tuning in with us, y'all. Yes. As you always know, we end our conversation and close out this container with gratitude. And we want to, again, bring recognition and honor to our benevolent ancestors, the ancestors of the lands. Thank you for joining our conversation today. And as we end, we leave you with a blessing. May you continue to find the strength within to bravely walk this decolonizing path, remembering that you are always divinely guided, protected, and blessed. May you consider that no matter the state of the world and the times we are in, your very existence is poetry. Mm. Poetry in motion, you are art. Energetically molded and manifested through the sacrifice, tenacity, resilience, and brilliance powered by all the ancestors who prayed for you. Mm. You are a piece of peace in the community of Kapwa, may you remember who you truly are. And until we meet again, may you know that all is well and will be well. And whatever happens, you are loved. That one was good. I felt it. Did you feel it? I felt it. Okay. (laughs) Yay.